Hi students, welcome to Year 12 Chemistry and the Module 5 Equilibrium and Acid Reactions topic. This is video number 4 where we're going to start incorporating the concepts of enthalpy and entropy into a very complex process, photosynthesis. I have to admit when uh, thinking through this particular um, uh, outcome that you need to cover, um, there's really a very hard, it's hard to know exactly where to stop. Photosynthesis is a very complex process and it's made up of a series of reactions. Very simply, um, we can talk about uh, what's the uh, light phase, and what's also known as the dark phase or the carbon fixing phase. And these phases occur in different components or different parts of the chloroplasts in plants. The overall equation we, we probably know from even from um, a year 11 or junior years, and that is uh, water plus carbon dioxide uh, produces glucose. Uh, plus oxygen. Now the fact that this complex molecule is produced is increasing the order of the system which means we're going to have a decrease in the entropy of the system. We also know that in order for this reaction to occur we need an input of sunlight or at least some sort of a light source which is a source of energy and therefore this is an endothermic process. Energy is required to get this process to happen uh, and also it is a, um, a process which, in, which decreases the entropy of the system. That means that its delta G value is going to be very much in the positive realm. That means it's a non-spontaneous reaction. Now one of the things that's very interesting when we look at the whole process of photosynthesis is that as I said there's a number of very complex processes that are part of this. There are photosystems that are part of the thylakoid membranes in the chloroplasts of different plants and these photosystems are often using the energy of light to break water molecules up into hydrogen ions uh, and oxygen gas. It's these hydrogen ions that are then fixed to the, um, let me just change the colour so it's getting, becoming a little bit complex, uh, are fixed into the carbon dioxide over here to form the um, carbohydrate molecules of glucose that the plant will use for its energy store. We also know that this reaction here is the reverse of uh, aerobic respiration. So we know that the reaction does go in the opposite direction, but um, we can't regard photosynthesis and respiration as an equilibrium of two different processes. Uh, and this is because of the level of complexity that's associated with both respiration and also photosynthesis. One of the interesting things when we look at um, photosynthesis in a little bit more detail is what we find is that the, um, the processes involved in all of the changes that occur uh, for which this equation is just a, an, an overall uh, general equation, if you like, uh, uh, a Hess's law situation where we've put a lot of different steps together to get ourselves an overall equation. So it's really a Hess's law application in that sense. Uh, what we have is a combination of non-spontaneous photosystems. So these ones here are definitely um, endothermic, but we also have um, some spontaneous components that are part of our um, full range of reactions that are part that contribute to uh, photosynthesis. One of the things that we find when we look at this too is that the spontaneous components that are part of photosynthesis can lead to an increase in the entropy of the universe. And of course, this is something that must, this must happen. 
Okay, uh, according to uh, the second law of thermodynamics, we um, can't get anything for nothing, and so therefore uh, things slowly uh, break down and decay. The level of disorder is going to continually increase. As a consequence of this increase in entropy, um, the spontaneous reactions in photosynthesis are greater than the decrease in the entropy from the photosynthesis reaction. And therefore, in an overall sense, uh, we do find that we have an increase in entropy. So this process obviously occurs. Um, it occurs in plants all around us. It's occurring in plants where the temperatures are uh, sometimes quite low. Um, and nevertheless, it's another example of a non non equilibrium system. I think if you're a biologist, um, then you will have some understanding of what's going on in the different components within the um, uh, within the chloroplast itself, the stroma, the grana, the thylakoid membranes. You can look a very, uh, maybe in a little bit of detail at some of the chemistry of this in a little bit more detail. But at this stage, it's difficult for us to um, identify exactly to what level of detail you're going to need this process. So we'll provide you with a little bit of additional material, material in class um, to help you explore some of these quite challenging concepts. Thanks for watching.